Okay, can you all see that okay? Yep. Yeah, yep. okay. So uh, this is the kind of stuff that you can do at home on a rainy day like today. Um, it's all free and it's all fairly easy to use. Um, the next workshop, we'll have a look at resources for uh, kind of images and archives um, and documentary sources, but I thought today we'd focus on maps. So historic <coughs> maps, but also um, resources that have a map base to help you find what you're looking for. Generally, if you're looking for information on your on your local area, then having that that map available is really helpful. Um, you can actually just kind of see what's around about you. So there is tons and tons of stuff out there. Um, I use about 25 different websites for, for research, just kind of in the course of um, my everyday work. Um, and more and more archives, libraries, and museums are putting their collections online. So there's an enormous amount out there and sometimes it's just like a bit too overwhelming. You don't know where to start. So today we're going to focus on the National Library of Scotland maps website and a site called Past Map. Uh, and then next time we'll have a look at some of the more kind of image based and document based resources. We'll see how we get on time wise. I might end up splitting that into two. Um, so National Library of Scotland, um, has anybody been on that site before? No. no. Yeah, I've yeah, stumbled on it. Yeah. It's, I don't understand it. Right, so it comes with a health warning. It's seriously addictive. Um, it's kind of the, it's the gateway drug for, uh, for heritage fiends. Um, and you just disappear <laughs> down a rabbit hole, basically. Mm. Um, it's fantastic. So um, there are just over a quarter of a million online maps of Scotland and the rest of the world dating back to the sort of mid 1500s. Um, a lot of their maps are georeferenced. Now, all that means is <clears throat> they're sufficiently accurate that you can overlay them over a modern map. So you can kind of flip between the two. Um, the National Library site also has, well, because it's it's our National Library, there's like hundreds of books and manuscripts and all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, I just mentioned the Scottish Post Office directories um, because they can be really useful for if you're doing sort of research in your in your local area and you're looking at kind of uh, local businesses manufacturing that kind of stuff. It can make a nice kind of um, complementary resource to, to use in the maps. Uh, and they also have a range of historic newspapers. All that's free to view. Um, I will, uh, next week, I'll share with you our login details for the British Newspaper Archive, which is a paid for resource. Um, but I have an account for it for the project. So I'm happy to share that and you can knock yourselves out um, looking through all newspapers. They don't have a they don't have absolutely everything and the big gap for Scotland and particularly the Glasgow area is uh, editions of the Glasgow Herald which only go up to about the 1930s really frustrating but anyway never mind um the other thing that the National Library of Scotland has is Scotland's moving image archive um that is held at Kelvin Hall so that new facility that opened up across from the Kelvin Grove Museum uh, so you can go and you can you can search for a lot of film and stuff um, on their website, but sometimes they'll have stuff that you can only view if you go into Kelvin Hall. But they're really lovely people; they're really friendly, um, and it's actually again it's a really nice way to spend like a rainy afternoon <laughs> it's just to go in and you get a comfy seat and you just go and watch loads of films all day. Um, yeah, it's a hard life. The other site we're going to look at is a site called Past Map. Um, and that is uh, what we call an aggregator site. So it brings together, it aggregates uh, data information from lots of other uh, different places. So it's um, it's our, our big cultural heritage databases. Um, and there's a list of what you can see on that. It's easier to explain uh, through this. So 
um, Historic Environment Scotland, who kind of look after our, our national heritage. Uh, you might have heard of them before. They maintain a site called the National Monuments Record of Scotland, and that is every known historic and archaeological site in Scotland. Again, it's about a quarter of a million records. Wow. Um, they also have the responsibility for legally protected sites. You've probably heard of listed buildings before. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of scheduled monuments? Yeah. No. no. So basically listed buildings for anything that's standing above the ground. Um, scheduled monuments is everything that's buried. So archaeology. So if you think of, um, I don't know, uh, like, I suppose, well, the ring, of, it's not always buried, but, you know, stuff like the Ring of Brodgar um, or um, uh, Govan Old Churchyard, that kind of stuff. A lot of the archaeology tends to be scheduled monuments, but those are the two that have um, legal protection. Um, right. The rest tend to be more guidance. So you, uh, you get historic gardens and design landscapes, conservation areas, you might have heard of them. Um, yeah. It's also historic wreck sites and protected battlefields, and it also contains uh, our world heritage sites. Um, feeding into that is the historic environment records. So they're they're um, maintained by local authorities, and they then feed into the national monuments record. So that's kind of how that works. So it's just when you when you get on that site, that's essentially what uh, what's sitting behind it. That's where they're pulling all the information from, and that's what past maps looks like. But we'll we'll have a wee look at that again in a minute. So back to historic maps. Um, when you have been looking at historic maps, what were you what were you looking for specifically? Why did you why did you go to the National Library site or wherever you were looking? I was looking up old Roman forts. Okay. And one thing leads to another, to yeah. another, to another, and I ended up in the map room. Because I think, personally, I think there's a, a missing fort <coughs> about, um, oh, where is it? Fort Doon. Okay. Um, I reckon there's a missing fort about there. There could well be. Um, so historic maps, um, they're, they're fantastic. They're one of my favourite things. Um, and when you go through a series, if, you're, if there's a particular place you're interested in, and you'll see this when we have a look at the website, um, you can you can go through those different uh, editions of maps from whatever the 1700s right up to the present day, and you can see how a place changes over time. Um, that's that's basically it's that landscape scale change. So, um, you know, if you think about around about Glasgow, you're watching the city expand. You're seeing all those kind of little what were little weaving villages or kind of farmsteads and stuff and all the kind of cultivated land around about and then you see a new roads go in or you know, railways or whatever um, and you're you're looking at how that's changing over time and again some maps will give you information on who owns the land um, that's that's usually a big driver for for map making they're also a really good uh, good way of studying place names and how they change over time the one thing to bear in mind, and this goes, this is for any kind of research you're doing, is keeping your your critical brain, you know, switched on. So, what you tend to find is with um, people who are looking at documents, they'll be more critical of them and thinking more critically about them. Right, who wrote this and what's their perspective? What's their bias? Sometimes when you're presented with something, uh, a photograph, uh, or a picture, or a map we tend to take it more at face value. I don't know why that is. I think it's just something in the human brain. We just respond to um, and just go, oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Maps are always biased. It's extremely expensive to make a map. So you always have to bear in mind 
well, who's who's behind it? Who's making it? Why are they making it? And it usually comes down to land ownership. Um, so that can then, you know, uh, you, you're thinking about um, all the kind of conflicts um, potentially and, and stuff around about that. There's usually an there's usually a purpose behind the map. So for um, Glasgow area, uh, your kind of your your biggies here are uh, Timothy Pond. That was one of the earliest, very earliest maps of Scotland. Um, the other one uh, that is a is a really um, kind of critical map is uh, General General William Roy's Military Survey of Scotland. Uh, and then there's a few other forest and Ainsley. There's also lots of town plans, and we'll have a look through these. And then the ordnance survey maps, which are probably ones that you've uh, you've maybe come across before. So they, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, they they start in the 1840s um, and then run right up. There are national mapping agency that's ordnance survey, and unsurprisingly, if you think about the name, it all comes from. Um, from them that emerges out of that kind of military background, but I'll I'll go into that. So um so here's Roy's military map. Um and it's kind of amazing. He he mapped the entire mainland of Scotland between 17 oh, so that's the Lowlands edition. He started in 1748 and finished up in 1755. I mean it's an incredible uh, undertaking when you think about just moving equipment and people across the landscape. Um, and this is Glasgow here. So you can see, if you have a look at Roy's map, <clears throat> the red areas are usually urban. Uh, you'll pick up lots of uh, uh, place names. So there's Kamlachie, Barfield, Calton, Tenants, the Gorbals. Um, this is showing the, the lines here, that's showing uh, cultivated areas, and then he tends to use red for roads as well. Um, and this is, a, this is an image of Roy's um, mapping team out on site. You can see they've got a, their surveying kit and some horses and, and whatnot. This came out of, basically, it came, it came off the back of Culloden. Um, so after Culloden, lots of the highland layers, layers uh, scarpered for the hills and the British government were mm. raging because they couldn't find them. They, would, they just kind of disappeared and they had no maps to help them, you know, get into some of the glens and stuff. So they commissioned this massive uh, mm. mapping project of the whole of mainland Scotland. And what they were really interested in was how do you move troops around the country? So they were mapping anywhere uh, that there were like crossing points over rivers. So you'll see like um, there's a lot of attention paid to bridges um, and to roads and also and to settlements. Where are they going to get fed? So that was the driver behind that map. And that's uh, that's kind of Alert the content. You can't map everything, so you um, that that was what they were interested in. That was the motivation behind it. Um, but it's an amazing achievement, and it's it was the first map of Scotland that was done to a fixed scale, uh, so one to thirty six thousand, I think. Um, and that means that uh, they've it's so accurate. It's not perfect, but it's so accurate you can overlay it over a modern map, and it's it's roughly in the same area which was the first time that was possible as well. Mm. And that's the kind of gear that they were using to, to map. These are surveyors' chains, and they must have weighed an absolute ton. So just imagine dragging that up hills and all over the place. Uh, Fleming's great map for Glasgow. He's 1807. You can see the kind of level of detail, but also tells you what kind of works are in the area and who owns them. Um, it's got roads, it's got some of the kind of parish boundaries, that kind of information. And then Ordnance Survey Editions, you'd be quite familiar with them. Um, so this is the second edition from 1892, around about kind of Glasgow Greenway. And then for complementary sources, it's worth having a look at the, have you heard of the old and new statistical accounts? 
Do you ever come across them? Yeah. Again, they're all available online. Um, and uh, the 1780s, 1790s, this guy here, uh, this is Lord Sinclair of Ulster, um, first person to coin the term mm. statistics. Okay. Interesting factoid. Um, okay. He uh, he got every local parish minister to basically write a, a chapter on their local parish and he had a series of head, headers for them to kind of work through. So tell us about the geology, tell us about um, what people do in the area, uh, tell us how many parishioners you've got, all that kind of stuff. So again, it was a kind of, it's almost like a, a kind of an early census kind of thing, very, very detailed. Um, because he asked the local ministers, a lot of them spend at least a couple of pages complaining about how nobody goes to church. Um, that's, a, that's a common thing. Um, and there's two editions, so actually there's three, but um, yeah, the 1790s and 1830s can be nice, uh, a nice complement to some of those early historic maps. The other thing that's, uh, the other one that's worth looking at is the Ordnance Survey name books. So the Ordnance Survey uh, were set up in the 1840s, well they, were, they actually predated that, it was really William Roy that kind of um, set the whole thing up, but uh, those first uh, the first edition maps of the 1840s, alongside the surveyors, they also employed a team of um, researchers to go out with them and they would ask the local landowners, the local ministers or whatever, uh, for information on each of the places that they were surveying. So there's a really, really detailed um, yes. set of information uh, that goes along with every map, see, map sheet uh, that will give you like alternative um, spellings and names for places and a little bit of history and how much the acreage is and all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm going to really look at. Too. I had to get an ordinance survey when I bought this house. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm glad I did because it saved me £13,000. Lordy. Right, mm. I'm, I'm just going to... That's, that's, that's a very, very... A uh, quick overview of kind of historic maps. So we're, we'll have a wee look now. Uh, okay, can you see I've got my tab here on the National Library of Scotland? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and again, I'll include the links and everything for you. Don't worry about uh, writing anything down. Um, if you come off, you can just Google NLS and maps, and it'll it'll take you to this. But uh, yeah. I'll, I'll include all the links as well. So um, there's lots and lots and lots of maps in here and there's lots of kind of help and guide guidance as well. Um, I think probably the easiest entry point for this uh, is to have a look at the georeference maps. So these were the ones that are overlaid over a modern um, satellite map, satellite image. If I click on here and I'll just shut that off might just take a little while. So it defaults onto this view here. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And right, somebody tell me where to visit. Give me a Danoon. location. Danoon. Uh, Danoon. Danoon, we're going down the water. OK. In the water. I was there from about age seven to about 40. I, I was always very curious about uh, it's, it's like a monument in Dunning called the Castle Hill. I was oh, thought yeah. what castle was here, you know, because there's okay. no real remains of it apart from yeah. a, a monument. It's where the Queen Mary is looking over. Okay. Right. So, so we are, uh, we're sitting at Dunoon here. Um, now, uh, on this in this little box here, you can oh, see. Oh, you right. Right. Yeah, so there's a little category here. This one, it defaults uh, to Great Britain, um, mm. but we're going to switch it to Scotland. And we'll start with having a look at Roy's map. So that's from 1747. If it doesn't come up immediately, because he's included, um, you'll see when you mm. click the drop down here, you've got Roy right. Highlands and Roy Lowlands. Uh -huh. um, so if I click on Roy Lowlands, you get a slightly different view. Uh, 
Um, so most of that work's been done on the Highlands, so I'll just move in here. So uh, this is Dunoon in 1747. Ooh, barely there. <laughs> barely, barely there. If I zoom out, you can see, um, yeah, quite, quite sparse. But actually, mm. so, um, so you can change different maps here on that, and we'll just go through them. But the other thing I just wanted to show you was... Well, when you look at... Um... Campbelltown and Kintyre. I'll do, I'll head down there in a second. Um, I just wanted to show you this little slider at the bottom here. So if I drag that along, da, 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 you can see mm. it pulls up satellite view below. All right, it's really helpful. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah. and then you can you can switch through. So we'll we'll have a look at Campbellton in a second. Um, but there's lots and lots of different maps there because again these are georeference. You can use that little slider, um, just to kind of do a compare and contrast. Um, mm. the other way you can do that is by using the side by side view. So see up here, I'm exploring my georeference maps, so I can use the transparency slider, or if I click side by side, let me just take a minute to spin up. Yeah, yeah. You can see All right. if I move around here, I've got the modern view on this side and then um, the old map on the other. Mm. So we'll just take a wee swing down to Hamilton as requested. And, when no, where am I at? That's Aaron, that's too far. Right. Here we go. Testing my geography here. So here's Campbellton. Oh, so you can see quite a bit. Well. Yeah. Mm. Oh, cool. It's it's grown a bit. Mm. Still a bit it's bigger than Danoon, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of amazing, really. When you think this was made in, you know, the late 1740s, oh. you know, to have got that level of accuracy, it, it's an amazing achievement. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to go back. Uh, to... I think people back then were a lot smarter than us. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> Cross my mind too. Because it wasn't just one thing that they knew. They knew three, four, five different other things as well yeah. on top. Mm. And they made their own entertainment. They didn't, mm. they didn't have canned entertainment all the time. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go back mm. to that to your reference to you for a second. So um, that is the Roy's map. And again, either switch between highlands or lowlands. Um, other maps, so Arrowsmith, for instance, very um, quite small scale. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of detail there. And it's not really so for rural areas anyway, until you get to the Ordnance Survey editions. And you can see there's lots of different scales available here. So if we look at, for instance, the one inch scale. I mean, it's kind of detailed, but actually, you probably want something like the six inch edition, which is going to give you a lot more detail. You can actually see, we'll zoom in here. There's a distillery and oh, another yeah. distillery and another distillery. Mm -hmm. Um, so for What's rural that? areas, for rural areas, it tends to be the six inch edition uh, scale maps that have got the most detail. Once you get into the cities, um, you get much greater detail, particularly um, for any town that had a population over 4,000, they did what's called the town plan edition. And that was mapped at a scale of one to 2,500, incredibly detailed. Um, and that was done um, 
really to look at water and sewerage systems. So once they'd figured out that the um, like typhus and cholera were waterborne, um, and obviously there have been big outbreaks in the 1830s and 40s and well all over Britain, but Glasgow was quite badly hit. They, they realised that they needed to do something about uh, about public health. Um, and mm. part of that was mapping the existing kind of sewerage, water, all that kind of stuff. That was one of the drivers behind that map. Um, and then that detail. So if I go to town plans here, I mean, you can see, so they've done one for Campbellton because it was oh, obviously I... quite, um, you know, it was well populated at that time. But if I zoom in it's, here. It was affected by the cholera epidemic, not as much as the city, but, you know, no. there, is a, there is a small cholera cemetery in yeah. Campbellton, which is now a park. But the big one, is in Paisley, what they call the um, 50 pitches. Mm -hmm. uh, that land was given to the people of Paisley by an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. And it became the mass grave of uh, after for the cholera epidemic. Okay. Was, and then afterwards, of course, it was lying there and apparently Paisley was football crazy. Okay. So yeah. They created all those uh, football pitches there. Yeah. Um, so if you're lucky enough, you'll have um, a town plan, which Campbellton has for the first edition, but not the second. Um, the other really detailed maps are what's called road maps. So these were fire insurance maps. So again, that's the driver behind them. Um, so they're looking, if I zoom in here, you'll see they're, they're particularly keen to uh, map where there's um, flammable materials or you know where there's water points, um, what kind of, uh, glazing they've got on the roofs, that kind of stuff. Um, so you might get lucky with a good map as well. It's not; it, it's only for specific areas, and it tends to be kind of built up places. But yeah, ordnance survey and and the good edition maps are really good for that. You see, because there's so many distilleries in Campbellton, um, they would have needed to have good insurance policies. So that's again probably why why it's so well mapped out. Uh, does anybody else want to suggest somewhere to go and visit? Rob Royston. Rob Royston, right. We're off to Rob Royston. <coughs> <laughs> oh, vir virtual tour. Aaron. So It amazes me when they were making the, the plates to print all these maps how small a detail these guys are actually carving into the, the yeah, copper. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, so that's me. I've got my category selected there for Scotland Town Plans. Um, so I'll head to, head to Rob Royston in a second, but I'll just show you. These are a couple for Glasgow. Um, and obviously because Glasgow was quite small at that point, they hadn't started their big land grabs to to get the gorbals or uh, or partick or whatever. They tend to be in quite a kind of small area. But uh, MacArthur's maps really fantastic. Again, where did really, the where did the name the gorbals come from? Do you know at all? Nobody's really sure, to be honest. Um, there's a there's a kind of uh, some people uh, think it's. Um, it comes from the Gory Bells, and it's to do with a, a plague outbreak. I think that's an old wives' tale. Um, mm. I, I suspect it's Gallic in origin. Um, mm. There's a there's a Gorbals uh, there's a Gorbals in Ayrshire, I think. Um, right. I've not heard elsewhere. The other one is quite interesting. So, um, mm. Carlton. 
uh, you know, there's a restaurant in Barra's uh, called Achaltain. Uh, it's a Gaelic name uh, for, oh God, I can't remember the name of the tree, like um, uh, the ash trees or something. It's not. And they were claiming that that's the roots mm. of, of Calton. Um, it's actually, it's, it's not a Gaelic name. There's lots of other Gaelic names across Glasgow, but Calton's not mm. one of them. Um, it comes from Cold Town, called Cold Toon, um, and its original name was uh, Black Folds, which you'll see here. Angrid. Yeah. Angrid. Yeah. Peter had said to uh, us before that the Gorbals was on, um, came for the the the, the sheaves or a lowland Scots word, unfledged birds were there. The lepers that used to be big, if I remember rightly. Um, if, if I remember when he has talks. Okay, it could, it could be. Um, I think there's a lot of debate over gorbals. Um, because mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it does go quite far back. That's the thing. Yeah, I, I just remember that when he had the, when he was doing a wee chat <clears throat> before about the gorbals and govern and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, not, not, not saying that Peter's 100% right, you know, but I just remember him mm. saying, saying yeah. I'm going to say, Govan is another ancient name. Mm -hmm. It's been a settlement since uh, Viking times. Yeah. I mean, there's the grave of St. Constantine there. Mm -hmm. He was a Viking cleric, Celtic cleric. Uh, Ingrid, yeah. is that Gallagate Green? What is that? Gallagate Green. That's uh, yeah. the top end. Of, it would top end of uh, Glasgow Green. So if I was oh, that, I never knew that was that was what it's called. Yeah. With the low so, green, the high. Ah, uh, you've got the low green. Sometimes oh. that sometimes see that called uh, Dassy Green. Um, and then you've got oh, yeah, high green, that. the new green. Provost Hall or uh, Bell's property. It's, it's worth having a wee look through these. Fleming's another great map to have a wee look through. There's uh -huh. high green again. So um, Gallagher Green was also sometimes referred to as Calton Green. Right. You'll see different different names for different right. places. And um, I do love this. Uh, so if I zoom in here, this is the little Govan nursery. So you were talking about Govan earlier. Um, so Govan Parish used to stretch all the way over to uh, Hutchesonton and um, oh, this wow. area down here uh, was... Uh, Mayor Alla used to be part of um, Govan Parish. There's actually the wee church at the end of my mum and dad's is actually a satellite church for Old Govan Church. Yeah, it was a huge, I mean, it, it, it's it's a reflection of its importance in the medieval period. Um, Partick and right up to Hindland was part of Govan Parish and then right the way across, you know, the south side. Um, so, yeah, this is why it's called Little Govan Nursery. Because that uh, part of town was, was referred to as, as Little Govan. Um, and, yeah, so they're, they're yeah growing, growing food on the banks of the river. Mm. Quite nice. Um, this is one of my favourite maps, actually. This is, uh, yeah, so Fleming, 1807. Um, and, and then you've got the town plans coming in. So for Glasgow, you've got a town plan in the 1860s and in the 1890s, and you've got the road map. So we were heading for Rob Royston, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, la, la, la. Right, you'll have to keep me right here. My geography is not maybe what it could be. Uh, let's see, where am I at? So there's the there's the cathedral. I'm heading north, aren't I? Yep. Uh huh. Should be around about here then. St Rolex Chemical Works. Yep. It's just yep. up to that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lots and lots of industry. Um, well, so yeah, you've ones. got. So you'll be off the map for, yeah, off the map. Oh no, just got a little bit of 
at the Pope and out there, 1807. Um, and you've also got the second edition town plan. So you can see the change then between your first edition in the 1850s and, and then the 1890s. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, so, that, so that's always been a Rolex then? Yep, pretty much. Um, I think it goes back to the late 1700s. Uh -huh. Like the, yeah, the chemical works, they're, they're old. Um, and obviously you've got the canal coming through there. Phil Monkland's canal, now under the motorway. Um, so other maps to keep an eye open for, if I go back to Scotland, there's a great one for later stuff. Uh, so again, very detailed. So this is the, an edition that was done in the 1950s. Again, you've got to really zoom in to get, to get the detail there, but I'll, I'll put this one in the links too. Um, so these are the maps that have been georeferenced, and there's there's a lot of them to look at. But there's also, so if I jump to Map Finder here, and a bit. Sorry, it's been a bit slow. Um, So these are maps, if I click on, uh, let me see, the time plans again. Um, so I might click on there. Well, that's taken me to the, to the time plan. I'm gonna come out of the city for a minute. Oh, it's just up there, right up there. Oh yeah, hang on. Robin Mall Road, that's just room for me. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, there's, there's almost too much. Uh -huh. This is this is why it comes with a health warning. <laughs> you could be here forever. Um, so for instance, if I click on this lot here, um, so here's Timothy uh -huh. Pond's maps. So these are the ones that go back to the basically the late 1500s. Sure, yeah. So they're not um, they're not georeferenced. You've just got to kind of zoom in and, and kind of guess where things are. But uh, this is this is pretty much the earliest maps that we've got for for Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And uh, let's James see. James the Fourth um, arranged um, for the coastline of Scotland to be surveyed. Uh, he was the first one to create a Scottish Navy and also as a spin-off from that he had the, the entire coastline east, north and west surveyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing to be aware of uh, with the really old maps is uh, so you can see here's Glasgow um and I don't know if you can can you spot any other names that look familiar? I saw Paisley a minute ago. Yeah. Blyde Blydeswood. Blydeswood, yes, Blydeswood there. Uh, the Kevin Kellogg there. Yeah. Kevin Kellogg. Hi. You can just if uh, you switch. I'm struggling to read some of that right. <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's really hard. Once you get your eye in, you can start. Oh, Cadence. Yeah, Cadence. Yeah, uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Um, is that the? How did I put this? Tarsic that... didn't come into Glasgow until um nineteen twelve. So, what? Which we um. Which way is north here? Yeah, to the right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so we're we're used to reading maps with north pointing up the way, mm. and then west that way and east that way. Um, a lot of the older maps uh, tend to be they have east 
to the north. Um, it, it's, kind of, it's actually it's the root of, uh, of orientation. So the orient part means east. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. that was how old maps were, were done for the east to the north. So just be aware when things look a bit squinty and you're like, oh, I don't understand that. That's uh, that's quite often just because the map maker makers change the orientation from from what we normally um, tend to use. Um, and I'll just show you a couple more. Uh, oops, sorry, digital resources have come out of that. Uh, Andrew, the are other... you able to take a screenshot? Yes, you can. Um, or print them out. You can take yeah, you can take screenshots and things um, and. You can you can also order they're, they're actually if there's a map that you really like and you want a nice copy of it you can order them from uh, from the National Library and they're they're very reasonable you can get a high quality color copy um, cool. sent out to you for like fifteen quid you know if you wanted a nice one for your wall I know because I love my cartography I know well or you can order them digitally. Uh, and you get them pretty much straight away, but they're they're actually really they're actually really good. Um, so I'm just gonna have a look. So this is another way into the the resource. You can also kind of search by place. So if I go back to Glasgow, no, no, no. it'll line it'll um there you go. show you a massive long list of maps for Glasgow. <laughs> Wow. So you can have a bit of fun. Uh, I? I know, yeah. It's it's can be a bit overwhelming at times. But you just I, I would say just it's go, gonna be go lost in Wikipedia. It is just mm -hmm. go and have a play. <laughs> it's the best the best thing to do is just to go and have a wee play. Um I'll I'd start with the georeference maps and then have a look at the you know the town plans or depending on where you're looking, um mm. you could either go for Town plans or um, just put the, the National Library of Scotland. Yeah, National Library of Scotland maps. Um, I'll I'll send you the links through. Okay. Anyway, fine. that is it is an absolute rabbit hole, and I realise mm. that we're now suddenly at quarter to two, so I'll better show you past map now. <laughs> right. Okay. So again, you can either just Google past map, or I will send you the link through. Um, so this is the site that pulls together um, all these different uh, databases for our national heritage. Mm. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here because you'll see, if you look in the oh. data layers at the side here, it says not available at this zoom level because there's right. so much information there. It will only display mm. when you zoom in to a certain scale. So I'm going to zoom in again. You can use the little controls here. Um, or it, it just basically, the control functions uh, are very similar to like Google Maps. So, you know, you can you can use the little um, uh, functions here or you can lose your little control scroll wheel or whatever. And then when I get to, let me see. Oh, I still got a zoom oh, in. Rob Royston, they meet. Oh, like, do you want to go to Rob Royston again? Okay. Yeah, that's it there. They meet. There we go. Okay, right. Let's let's go to Rob Royston. So we're still. It's still saying not available at this zoom level. And and still not available at this zoom. Level. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that three <laughs> we're now available. Right. So you do have to kind of pan around a bit, but the, the reason is there's just so much stuff. So um, you can see down the side here, you've got these data layers and it says listed buildings, Canmore. So Canmore is the name for uh, the National yeah. Monuments Record of Scotland. That's all the known um, archeological and historical sites. So I'm gonna oh, switch, uh -huh. switch that on. And we'll switch on listed buildings. So there's one listed building popping up there. And if I click on that, it shows you the results in the side window here. And then if I click on it again, it'll spin slowly. 
Ah, can you speed up? Uh, that's the road hey, Okay, so uh, that's taken me to see up the top there. It says Portal Historic Environment Designation LB. So LB is listed building and then number 33874. So huh? it tells you that it was, um, uh, it's B listed. It was listed in 1970. Uh, it's a monument at the roadside erected 1900 to mark repeated site of house in which Sir William Morris, guardian of Scotland, was portrayed in 1305. So oh, that's wow. your spot there. Oh. Um, so that's the listed building. And then if I click back there, and if I click the blue dot, it'll give me, so that's, that's going to take me to Canmore. Very slowly. <laughs> and depending on what's in there, sometimes it gives you a little okay. description there about what it is. Um, I'll see if I can find one with some images in it. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Midges love me. Uh, I thought you said midges there, Spridges. <laughs> All right. Uh, that one. Well, that's Red Rose Eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So uh, here's a bit of modern, modern stuff. So this is the Red Road High Flats. So that's taken me to the yeah, record here. There. So there's a description, um, and then there's also, if I click on the top tab here, mm. these are all the images that are available in the archive for it. Um, and if I click on that one, for instance, you can see, tells you a little bit more about it. And you can download these images as well. They're not they're not high resolution, they're not uh, great quality, but um, just for doing your own wee bits of research and stuff, it's quite handy. So you just click the little download button. And again, you can buy high quality versions of these images, um, but you'll be charged, I, I can't remember, I think it's like a tenner again per image. So if it was something that was, you know, you wanted a Christmas present for somebody or something like that, it might be quite, quite nice. Um, so we'll just head back there. So that's your, oh no, I'm going back too far. I'm going to head to, let me see, let's go to Govan for a second and I'll show you some scheduled monument stuff. Okay. So Govan's Heaven. Um, if I click on scheduled monument, you can see there's these areas pop up, mm. not just dots. So if I click on that, uh, and you can see classified as a scheduled monument, and I can open that up, and that will tell me again a bit more about it. <clears throat> so for doing, you know, for you do for when you're doing research on your own area, or or if there's a particular place you're away on holiday somewhere, and you're like wondering, oh. I passed that, I don't know, something that looked a bit interesting, uh, but you're not sure what it is. It's always worth having a wee look on past map because uh, chances are it'll be in there. Um, even if it's not legally protected and it's not something like, you know, it's not a listed building, um, there's a lot more than that. You know, they've got, um, so there's, uh, the, Har the old Harland and Wolf uh, shipyard building. I'm assuming that's probably what it is. That's been recorded. It's no longer visible. There's nothing left of it, but there's a point in there telling you where it is. Or where it was, I should say. Um, or if you're into battlefields, for instance, so I'll just turn that off. Uh, so would you be able to like find 
an image of, say, like the old Roman map of Britain? Um, actually, William Roy did one of. Oops, hang on a second. Oh yes, that would be great. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, so uh, I think I'll just go back. I'm pretty sure Sir William Roy did a map of Roman antiquities in the 1750s because he was really interested in them. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick look because it might actually be on the National Library site. There you go, military antiquities of the Romans in North Britain. So, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm so in trouble with this website. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he's got text pages. I know there was a map for this. You might just have to kind of flick through it. Look away and mm. Google it on the NLS site. <laughs> it's in there. The other thing you can do, um, not so much. Uh, how to explain this. So um, you can, if you know the area well, use the map base. If you're looking to find out something, so if I go back to Canmore. What is Canmore? Can, can can, so can, Canmore is a big database of all the known archaeological and historical sites, and it's, um, it's run and maintained by Historic Environment Scotland. Right. I, I knew that I knew the name from somewhere, right? Yeah. So past map um is using like a map to help you find things that are in Canmore. But if you're looking for um if I go to the no not search the summary, sorry. If I go to the search no, from I, Canmore. I just like using the, the old maps to see how other people seem the layout of land and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But you can use Canmore other ways as well. You can search. So, for instance, if I type Roman in here, there's Roman for it come up. Uh, <coughs> and just do a wee search. That gives me all the returns for everything Roman. <laughs> um, so or Roman forts, I should say, 74. So you could have a look for through, um, look for them through that way, or mm. they've also plotted them for you handily on a wee map. There's, there's the Antonine Wall, and then you've got the um, Bindo Gask and all the way up to Aberdeenshire yep. and yeah, and through the south of Scotland and funnily enough, very little in the Highlands. <laughs> Handley Roman free. Um, so where that's, was the wall, that's the wall that's at Bear's Den, is it? Uh, Bear's Den will be in there as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can see them all like a little chain uh, along the estimate there. So. so there's lots of different ways to kind of get the same information. Um, it's like all these walls, Hitler made the same mistake. He built a, a wall that he thought which, uh, you know, the French did, the French built the wall, sorry. And of course, Hitler just went round the end of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, I think the, with the Romans, it's all about taxation rather than actually <coughs> necessarily uh, keeping people out. It's about making money off the native population if they can. Uh. Um, the sort of administrative thing. They're very good at admin, the Romans. Um, anyway, that has been a bit of a, I'm sorry, that's disappeared really quickly. That's been kind of a whistle stop tour through a couple of, that's, that's two sites that we've had a look at today and that's, that's probably been a bit of information overload. Um, so I will... No, I've just found my new addiction. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I've just I've stopped sharing now. Um I'll so I'll I'll send through uh information and oh I'll maybe just um 
stop the recording.